the, the, at least the medical literature recently, and there's a lot written on it in our, in our neurology literature about uh, injuries to the brain and about when you see diffuse axonal injury. And this is just to give some background on it. This, this is a lady named Stritch who started working on uh, specimens back in the mid-50s. And uh, she noticed that they, uh, she was seeing a lot of white matter lesions that she thought were due to stretch of uh, the axons, uh, maybe some small areas of hemorrhage. They uh, uh, seen in the corpus callosum, some other white matter tracts. Uh, you may see hemorrhage on MRI if it's severe in these areas. Uh, standard MRI does not show that, but uh, it can be uh, uh, identified on some specialized uh, uh, MRI studies. Um, this is just a little slide, actually, actually a little too busy, I think, uh, for the, to show very much. But th this is presumably shows the white matter tracks. So you can see how you would get uh, injuries along here. These are just showing supposed disconnections between the networks of white matter. And you can see these little areas of hemorrhage here. This is the corpus callosum. Uh, on a coronal view. And then diffuse tensor imaging is the, the new technique that's being used to look at white matter tracks. Diffuse tensor imaging has been around a long time uh, on a research basis, but it's not, at least in my area, it's, it's not something that I can order on my patients now. In some areas, maybe it is, but it's not a common uh, clinical study. Uh, there are, these studies are used uh, uh, I think there's some academic interest in it, and, and they're, they're really fascinating when you start looking at uh, how sensitive uh, diffusion tensor imaging is for various different uh, disorders. Uh, but it's, it's being used uh, to look at uh, brain injury. With the, and the focus is on trying to find an objective measure of mild brain injury. That's the focus, okay? Severe brain injury you see on normal MRI. Mild brain injury, uh, how do you identify that? And we'll talk about that more as we get into the concussion because you all are familiar with the syndrome. Patients have a mild head injury and then they have all kinds of symptoms that they want to attribute to it. And it, uh, finding an objective basis for that is a challenge. And so there's, there's I think uh, it's a good idea to focus on some objective uh, identifier of that. Uh, Anyway, this is, uh, this is showing a flare image and a, a, tensor, a diffusion tensor imaging. And you can see that there's uh, this area here they're focusing on is uh, uh, an area that you see over here on uh, uh, this other image. Maybe see a little bit here even on the flare. Uh, this is uh, just a little bit uh, more detail about it. You can see they, they've, they often put false color here so you can see the difference in the normal brain. But here they're seeing a little bit of uh, change in the diffusion uh, tensor imaging. And then they're showing the, the pathways and you see a little rent in the pathway. So uh, presumably when you get a head injury, uh, if you did diffusion tensor imaging on all of your patients within a certain period of time, you might be able to see some of this. But uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit later on. Probably diffusion tensor imaging is probably not ready to be used in the manner it's being suggested. But as we get into concussion, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more. Now let's, let's go into uh, the uh, concussion part of the uh, presentation. Let's talk about the mechanism. I have a little video if, this, if I can get this to work side of the head, causing damage to the brain where it hits the skull. The brain is injured at the point of direct impact, and because it bounces back into the opposite side of the skull, the opposite side of the brain is injured. All right, this video has been edited.